Welcome to Peak TV. I'm Niv Dagan, Executive Director of Peak Asset Management. We've got Mark Talbot and Stefan Sharps all the way from Germany. Gents, welcome. Good morning and uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. Mark, just want to talk a little bit about LifeSpot. Can you just give us a quick synopsis about what you do? Okay, so LifeSpot uh, is actually a telemedicine-based company. Uh, we operate in sort of three distinct areas, point of care. Uh, we also operate in home care space and we're looking to also move into the e-health record space as well. So that's our three primary markets. So in the home care sector, we're principally looking to take diagnostics of uh, seniors or assist, you know, assisted living space and that data flows through onto our cloud-based platform and provides some analytics around that space. And Stefan, this is a question for you. I mean, you've got a, a platform that is device agnostic and you've got the medically certified data. Can you uh, elaborate on that as well? Well, being device agnostic on the one hand and having a medically certified platform on the other hand is a huge advantage compared to any of the competition. Uh, the reason is, uh, if you collect data, you want to have co uh, data available from all kind of vital parameters, from all kind of data that is available, uh, and you want to feed these data uh, to the people who actually need to do something with the data. And this is ex exactly what LifeSpot uh, BodyTel has been doing. And Mark, what, what would you say your competitive advantage is relative to, to others in the market? Oh, very clearly. Uh, we're one of the few, if not only, uh, companies that have a medically approved uh, platform and cloud. Uh, that has put us in good stead, and particularly in recent conversations in Germany with Deutsche Telekom, uh, they've directly came to us uh, looking and seeking answers, uh, not in any tender format, purely coming straight to us for that purpose because of that particular capability and unique selling point over others in the market. Uh, we also have an interesting uh, capability around bringing on devices in an agnostic fashion. So we're not tethered to any particular product. Uh, we simply take in the information, put it on the cloud, analyse, and then we can feed it back either to the carer or straight back to the user. And Stefan, what else would you say the, the competitive advantage for LifeSpot and BodyTel is? One of the major competitive advantages is that the data that is being collected can be used to put a treatment or diagnosis based on the available data on the platform. And uh, therefore the doctors, the physicians, the nurses, all can do actually something with the data and uh, use the data as, uh, as it is available on the platform. And Stefan, this is a question for you. Can you give us a little bit more of an update on what's the latest with B. Braun, Bure and Roche and where things are at? Yeah, B. Brown, Boyer and Orosh also are our main clients at the moment uh, and are, we are working for these clients and uh, we are actually adjusting the platform for these clients uh, uh, that they can actually use our engine uh, for their purposes. And that's exactly what we're doing for all three of them. Vice versa, uh, we're also are in deep discussions uh, with strategic corporations with these manufacturers because they also have an interest to integrate their devices into our platform uh, that these data also end up with the physician. So Mark, just, just on Roche, and I just want to sort of elaborate more on Roche and the opportunity, can you just tell us a little bit what the revenues look like sort of within the next six or 12 months? Okay, Roche is, is a, an interesting example. Again, we've changed the, uh, I suppose, the dynamic with Roche, and we're looking at an opportunity whereby they have a potential market share that they're looking at is around six to 700,000 clients. They currently service 200,000 clients, and the view is that their coagulcheck device, which is to look at um, warfarin levels, particularly in and the coagulation in the blood, the model there is we'll finish our consultancy piece around onboarding of their device, and then we move into a simple uh, SAS model. And we've changed it slightly with the dynamic with them in the sense that we actually get a percentage of sales. And that's the proposition we have with them at the moment. As I said, we're working towards that end result, but they're receptive to that model. So we may pick up, for example, 50 euros per, per product sold. And their intention is to move to sort of 50,000 units, to move 50,000 units per year. So that's a 10 million uh, revenue opportunity. So we're working hard to, to close out that position. So on that $10 million opportunity, I mean, how confident do you believe you, you can get that? Oh, simply if, if we're on board and, and, and they, uh, they move with us to, to build the model, do the consultancy service, it'd be extremely strong. Mm. Uh, I've downplayed it, they said 100,000 unit sales per year, I'm looking at more likely 50,000, yeah. which I think is more conservative and even still, 
a ten, well, ten, a ten million dollar revenue opportunity is not not too bad. No. Um, I mean, on on, on B Braun, Stefan, more specifically, right? Um, obviously, the, the moving things towards the global launch of that, and I think that that's a, that's a favourable outcome, um, given that they will launch the product globally rather than segmentedly. Can you sort of elaborate a bit more about that? Yeah, on B Brown, uh, as you know, B Brown is uh, will be launching a, a range of uh, blood glucose meters uh, that are connected actually around to apps and portals, and we are the software provider for B Brown. The big advantage of having um, a global launch here is really that uh, we are not just talking about an individual market, Germany or Europe alone. Uh, B Brown has an interest actually to gain market share around the world and uh, this is a USP that is necessary around the world and we will be providing this uh, as a part of the software uh, solution that we do for them. And Mark, you've identified a number of uh, key focuses for, for the underlying business and that's um, the home care, the point of care and the e-health record. Can you elaborate a bit more about each of the opportunities and where you see sort of the total adjustable market, life plus opportunity okay. and on each one? So the home care market's a very interesting space. In fact, uh, the global market is around 250 billion annually and growing. There's also another couple of sectors in that space for uh, assisted living for dis disability sector, um, particularly which is another sort of similar sized market. So what we're doing there is uh, looking to put in uh, 24-7 systems that uh, analyse and monitor and assist the person, particularly seniors, to stay at home longer. We're also providing a preventative service, so whereby we can monitor and analyse the data and prevent uh, excursions to the hospital uh, nationally through ambulance travel. Uh, it has two major benefits. Financial is one, but second, it's also the, uh, the stress placed upon the senior person. And uh, our system also provides, I suppose, a level of comfort for the carers uh, around the, the seniors in that particular market. So our, our entry to market at the moment is that we've got a number of opportunities we're looking to leverage to get into that space. It also provides a, an additional revenue opportunity for a number of players in the market, whereby they can extend out of aged care facilities and start, I suppose, reaching out to the home care sector and getting new clients on board early so that if they make the transition to aged care, it's a natural uh, transition for those people. The second point is around the, the point of care space. So in that particularly, we, can, uh, we have carers that can visit the home of seniors or anybody particularly, um, even concierge doctor services as well. They can go out, take the diagnostic data, then it travels back onto our cloud and it's available to the carer or back into the family members or just back to the person. And that's a particularly strong space. Now, that includes not only carers making visits, but it's actually self-diagnostic. So if, for example, you're a diabetes um, patient, you take your own measurements, the data gets on the cloud and it comes back to you. It can also be analysed by your physician and help with your management plan. The last point, which is a particularly big challenge for most global markets at the moment, is the e-health record. Uh, for example, in Germany, they are mandating in the next, I think, 18 months, two years, to move to a position whereby uh, the data is now owned by the person and it must reside with the person. So they're looking for a solution. We have that solution. Uh, our system has the capability of taking that diagnostic point of care data, the home care data. And I think also, we also talked a little bit earlier around the, the third party information. So for an example, uh, pathology reports, um, they can come in via our system. They go to the, care, uh, to the carer, particularly the physician, They'll look at the data and then they may release, then they may release it back to the client and then it's, it's stored on their particular data record. So that's a, another very interesting angle. It's actually an interesting revenue opportunity for us simply through the, the transfer of that data through to the clinician and back to the person. So we would typically pick up a small revenue fee off that action. Because from my understanding, and this is also for Stefan, there's, there's a large European-based pathology company. I mean, they're mm -hmm. doing one, two million transactions or client records per day. Yeah. You can charge them one or two cents per That's day. Right. That, that translates to some, some significant revenue opportunities for, for LifeSpot. Exactly. Uh, the global market's around 5 billion tests done annually. Mm. Uh, Australia alone has 500 million tests done annually. Mm. So uh, it doesn't take a lot to do the maths. If we charge one or two cents per transaction, it's a very serious income stream for us under it as a baseline. And on that, I mean, how, how advanced are you in those discussions? Uh, we've started discussions with one of those uh, particular pathology companies. What's really been interesting though is 
that project I mentioned earlier with Deutsche Telekom, we're actually, that project is really actually for a company by the name of KBV. Mm. Now KBV represents all of the doctors across Germany and they have a, a private network or a medical network that services that collective. Uh, Deutsche Telekom have approached us potentially to provide a new, uh, I suppose, server-based, cloud-based system that sits on that, on that particular network, which gives us access mm. to nearly 200,000 physicians across Germany, um, with a view to putting a portal potentially on all of their desks. And Stefan, you're, you're at the, the coal front of, of it all. I mean, what, what sort of conversation are you having at, at in Germany and the team with the Deutsche Telekom and, and KBV? And where, where do you see the, the revenue opportunity there? Yeah, well, we have very long-lasting relationship with Deutsche Telekom and our, they include us into their projects that they actually generate uh, in Germany and or also other European countries. In this specific project, uh, they have one specific state, one of the 16 states in Germany, uh, where they're piloting a very, very big project together with KBV, which is the Doctors' Association, the umbrella organization for all the doctors, uh, with the major healthcare insurance companies. And uh, this is a treatment project uh, for three years, actually, and uh, we're currently putting everything together to come up with a successful uh, project proposal uh, that is being submitted to the federal government, and we hope that it will be approved very, very soon. And obviously, there's, there's a lot of addressable markets. It's, it's a huge marketplace, the, the medical records and, and the e-health um, yep. engine especially, pathology, mm. I mean, asthma, I mean, the, the, your clients, B. Braun, Bioir Roche. Um, where do you see, I mean, in terms of, I know you can't give guidance, but, but sort of what are the catalysts over the next, call it, three to six months? Why should we be buying last spot right now? I mean, right now, you're sitting at around $6.4 million in cash. The stock's around mm. 20, 21 cents yeah. per share. So you're sitting on an undiluted 37 million shares, which mm. um, we, we think is very, very tight, given that we control quite a large proportion. But why should we be buying you right now? Where, where does it, what does the revenue look like in, you'd say, six or, or 12 months from here? Okay, so we're really in this, I suppose, next period, short-term period, it's a bit of an incubation period. We've uh, redefined, our, our, I suppose, our value proposition, and that value proposition has been warmly received, particularly in Australia and Europe, where our primary functions are. I believe that once they start clicking into gear in the back part of this year and we start turning into some of those long-term, I mean long-term revenue streams, not just an upfront sales opportunity, these long-term repeat baseline um, baseload incomes, we will definitely be moving north in terms of share price and, and I believe that's, that won't be too far away but it's, it's really a period of, of getting into the game. So once these larger ones like KBV start maturing, we're really in the early phases of what I call, I suppose, in preliminary engineering phase. We're really doing definition on behalf of KBV and Deutsche Telekom. Once we move in and transition into the project, there'll be consultancy services building solutions. But once they click into the, um, the customers, because KBV again represents 72 million customers across Germany through the insurers. So therefore, if this gets online and we pick up a portion of those clients in the next uh, period, then you'll start seeing that, that base load income just keep growing and it'll, it'll just keep growing. Mm. And it just keeps layering on itself. And, and, and Stephen, obviously, I mean, there's, there's a huge opportunity with, with Roche and Braun and, and, and um, Bureau to, to expand uh, originally. The pathology market is, is a huge market for you. Um, what are you focusing on really over there in Germany to, to really push, push revenues forward? Well, as you all know, um, the trend currently is in digitalizing the whole world. And uh, the healthcare market is, a, is actually one of the last markets that is not yet truly digitalized. What we are doing uh, in LifeSpot, uh, respectively with the BodyTel platform, is really being at the forefront of digitalizing uh, uh, the healthcare market in regards of data, patient data that is being collected from patients or on patients uh, with point of care systems. And that is the huge trend that will eventually lead into uh, large revenues, either with one of, the, uh, of, of these clients, with all of these clients, or individually with our own platform uh, that we actually push to market. Mark, Stefan, thanks for joining us at PTV. Thank you, Niv, it's been a pleasure.